Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84, and welcome to another video. Today I'm doing a little video for a GPU June. Let's hope I get this video out before June ends. Anyway, I wanted to talk about something that was interesting that I got a few months or a year. Who knows, time is weird. Um, and it's, well, I guess one could argue, hey, that's not a GPU, but it's got a processor on it, it does video things, I'm considering it a GPU. Now, the machine that I'm going to be installing this on is something that I've been working on for a while. That is this Quadra 800. And I know I promised a video series of me continuing to tinker on with this Quadra 800, but life got in the way, so that happened. However, we're going to feature that machine in this video. We're going to install this card into it, and we're going to talk about how it works, hopefully, and go on and play around with it and things like that. So what video card will I be installing in this Quadra 800? And what type of a video card is it? Well, it's not a PCIe card, it's not an AGP card, it's not a PCI card, it's not an ISA card, it's not a microchannel card, it's a Nubus card. You don't know what Nubus is? Well, you're about to find out. So let's get that card over here. This is this bad boy here. This is a Radius Video Vision with the Studio Upgrade. And yeah, there you go. And so this is not only a card that you could plug a monitor into, the whole idea behind this card is to capture and output audio and video, standard definition of course, from composite or S-video sources. Uh, so yeah, this has a breakout box here, and you can plug your devices into here, and it boasts being awesome and studio quality and all this stuff. This has a few upgrades done to it, so it's not just the standard uh, video vision product, and we'll get into all those details in a little bit. But I wanna tell you how I came across this item, and some of the boundaries and uh, hurdles that I ran into along the way. So I was browsing social media marketplaces and this thing came up and it was $50, but it was a bit far away, I think an hour drive or so. Now I just so happened to be driving by that area and I had contacted the seller to ask them some questions about the product. They didn't have it in a location where they could easily access it, but they had the photos of the box and some of the discs and stuff like that that was inside of it, including the card itself, which was in an anti-static bag. So while I was driving through the area, it was kind of late, so I said, you know what, uh, I'm not sure if I really want this right now. I'll decide later when I get home. So when I got home, I looked up this thing a little bit more, and I thought, you know what, that would be fun to put in one of my machines and do some AV stuff with. I'm a sucker for old video capture cards. I like playing around with them. They remind me of when I was playing around with my Power Macintosh 7500 as a kid, which had those AV inputs. So I thought that'll be fun. I could use this on a 68K Mac because this is a new bus card and that'll be a fun thing to play around with. So I messaged the seller and we got into a, you know, a pricing negotiation there and it was about $50 with shipping. So I thought, okay, that's not too bad. So I paid the individual and I waited for the tracking number, which never really came. And I started to get concerned at this point, although I was protected by the this social media's uh, marketplace thing. And when it arrived, my heart sank because what the individual had done was they had taken the Radius box, and I'll do a cutaway here, and put labels all over it, like just white packing labels, I guess. And I don't know what the heck their reasoning was behind this because what they did was they covered up this beautiful box with all these horrible labels. I don't know if they were just thinking, well, the box has to be plain to be shipped or something like that, which I don't think is really true. I mean, there's no barcodes really on the box except for the UPC, you know, but they put these labels everywhere, covering everything on the box. And my heart sank because I liked this because it had the original box. There was one on eBay at the time that didn't have the original box, it just had the card and such, and I thought, all right, well, I'm gonna get the original box one. It's a little cheaper and it has the original box. So hey, it'll look cool on the shelf and stuff like that. Unfortunately, it came in this condition. So I thought to myself, how can I carefully remove these labels? So I took some goo gone and I was very careful about removing those labels. And to my surprise, it actually was working. These labels were being removed very carefully with very, 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 very minimal damage to the box. So when I peeled that last label off, I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know how we survived this, but we got there. And I was very excited because the box, as you can see here, is pretty much intact. You know, it shows some age, but you know what? It is pretty much all there, and that makes me a happy person. So I got the box, and as things do, 
you know, you get stuff from eBay, or at least if you're a dork like me and you keep ordering these things, you get stuff for projects and they sort of just pile up. And that's what happened with this. It sort of just sat there and I didn't really have the time to play around with it or something else grabbed my attention, etc. So what happened? Well, it sat on my shelf for a while. Now, shortly after I got it, I did open the box briefly to see if it had everything that it looked like it had in the advertisement. It looked to be okay, so I put it back on the shelf. Months or years or however long later, I took it down and I said, all right, well, let's try and use this thing now. And I took out the card and I took out the breakout box and I said, well, let's plug things in. And I went to plug in the breakout box of the card and it didn't fit. Yeah, so the card looked like it was a radius card, but in fact, it wasn't. But although this card looked similar, it was not a radius card. And I actually found the manual for this card online and it seems like it was a decent card, but it did not do anything near like what this radius card was supposed to do. So what likely happened is somebody bought the radius card as an upgrade, installed it in their system, and took out their old card and put it in this box. Now, of course, the individual seller probably looked at the thing and said, yeah, this looks like a card, and they probably had really no knowledge of this vintage stuff. And honestly, when I opened the box, I saw this big honking Nubus card with all these add-on boards on it, with a similar looking breakout port on it. And I said, yeah, I think that's it. I left it in the box. So lesson learned, inspect everything thoroughly when it arrives, do not wait. So at this point I contacted the seller and I said, look, you sold me something that you likely didn't know was the wrong thing. And I didn't look at it until, you know, months later. But you know, if you find the original, let me know. And they said, yeah, okay. But they weren't going to refund me or anything like that, which eh, whatever. So I went online to look for a replacement radius card. And unfortunately, these things tend to command a pretty high price. Now, this is probably the whole eBay effect thing where people are just spitting out a number and saying, I want a million dollars and no one's going to pay that. And so there's one on eBay that's like, I think it's still there. They want 500 or $600 for it in the original box. Don't get me wrong. This box is cool and everything. I would not pay anywhere near that for <laughs> this item in the box. And we'll see why. But anyway, I did find one that was internationally listed. So it was outside the US, the shipping was a little expensive and the guy just had the card, but it wasn't just the standard card. As I said, this thing had some upgrades on it, or at least it should have. It had a memory upgrade and the studio upgrade, which we'll get into in a little bit. So this card was exactly what this was supposed to be, but he didn't have the breakout board with it, that little extension cable with all the ports on it. So I messaged the seller and I said, are you aware that, you know, this card needs this thing and everything? And they were completely unaware and they wanted, uh, I think, 150 or something for it. Um, and I, I explained that said, look, you know, this card requires this thing where basically it doesn't work. I mean, I guess you could wire up something to it, etc. But uh, we essentially became talking about this subject and came to an agreement where I said, look, if you're willing to get rid of the card for a bit cheaper, I'll buy the card, no returns as is, you know, I'll, I'll buy it outright and, you know, you don't have the other piece for it, but I don't care. Um, and we made a deal and I ended up getting that card, which was fantastic because that's the piece that I was missing. I did take that card and inspected it and it looked like everything was okay. And I installed it into my Quadra 800 here. And initially I had some problems. However, it all just turned out to be that the upgrade card and all these things are to just be very carefully placed on the card itself. And when I was sliding that new bus card into the Quadra, some things became a little displaced and some video images weren't showing on the screen, etc., etc. However, I finally got the card installed successfully and it was recognized by the system software. Now getting video software on a 68K Mac is a little more trouble than I thought it would be. So I have a version of Adobe Premiere 3.0. I know it's not the latest one that could run on this machine most likely, but that's the box copy that I had. And there's a serial number right on the bottom of the box and it didn't work. <laughs> so I had to uh, use my brain and find uh, other numbers elsewhere and I got it to work. So Adobe Premiere 3 is running on this machine and there was a installation package, not in the floppies that was in the box. Unfortunately, they were not complete but I did find some on Macintosh Garden and some other sources where I was able to install the full suite of software that this Radius card needs to talk to programs like Adobe Premiere, et cetera. So I have everything installed in this machine. I think it's enough of me yammering on about how I got this, et cetera. 
let's take a look into this Quadra and see how this thing actually works. Now, because I have these lights and everything set up, I'm probably not going to film directly off the CRT. I'll do some video capture wizardry, but let's see how this thing works. Hi. Yeah, running into a bit of an issue here. This darn thing doesn't want to work. Not the computer, the card. So I shot a bunch of footage and <laughs> I'm going to be showing you clips of it because that's really all I can do at this point. I've sunk hours into this project. I've tried a lot of things. I've tried a stack of different video equipment. I have uh, some VCRs here. Every single one of them was being a little bit problematic in their own different way. I have a digital video hard disk recorder thing that I was using instead of a VCR, which made things a little bit easier. I was trying different camcorders and the camcorder battery died. And uh, it's been it's been a full Mac 84 episode, let me tell you that. I'm certainly happy I didn't pay over $500 for one of these things because wow, that would have sucked. But this thing, uh, it doesn't really want to work and it's frustrating. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you some clips of this thing kind of working, and then I'm going to fill in the blanks with some, well, narration. And we'll see how that goes. Now, before we begin, for those of you who are of a certain age, you probably are thinking, well, I could just take an HDMI cable, plug it into my laptop or desktop computer, and I could put an image onto my TV or a capture device or something like that, and I'm good to go. Well, that's present day. Computers can process high definition resolutions. They could display things on TVs with no problem. But back in the 1990s, it was a very different case. You could not just easily plug in a cheap adapter or a cable into a desktop computer and get it to display on your television. There were line converters and doublers and scanners and adapters and all sorts of convoluted technology that tried to make that happen for Macs and PCs. Now, the Radius Video Vision isn't the only product that allowed you to do that, but it does so in a very specific way that we'll be showing off today. So back in the day, if you want to share what was on your screen with, let's say, somebody who was watching on a projector or a TV, or better yet, you wanted to put that onto a videotape with a VCR and wanted to share that or send that somewhere, well, you needed a product like this or you needed those functionalities built into your computer. And in the early 1990s, that stuff was very expensive. It wasn't until the later PowerPC Max that we got some of this functionality built into the computer. So today we're going to be taking a look at how the Radius Video Vision can take videos in from, let's say, a VCR or a video game console and display it on our computer so we can capture it. And then we're going to also see how we can edit that footage and then spit it back out onto a videotape or a television screen, etc. So let's get going. We're going to be using our Macintosh Quadra 800 computer here today. And this machine was featured in a few videos that I did previously, but I wasn't able to complete that video series because life got in the way and other stuff happened. But I want to return to this machine and sort of do a spiritual successor to that video series. And we'll be using our Radius Video Vision on this machine today. Now, this machine has a 68040 processor, which is clocked at 33 megahertz. We also have 136 megabytes of memory. That's the maximum this machine can take. And it's running a SCSI 2SD version 6.1 adapter that has multiple partitions on it. So we have system 7.1, 7.6, and macOS 8.1 installed on this machine. We're going to see what we could do with this thing and how it works well with our Radius Video Vision. So once I installed Adobe Premiere 3.0, I had to get the software for the Radius Video Vision card. Now, that software has plugins that allow you to use it on any QuickTime compatible application. Now, what's cool is there are special plugins for Adobe Premiere, and you add those, and they're sort of like presets, and how that works is when you open up Adobe Premiere, it asks you what type of project you are going to create. And so if you select Radius Video Vision, you get a few options there, and we'll go through that as we play along. While I was doing research for this video, I found some really cool Radius promotional videos online. I'll link to them in the video description below, and I'll probably show a few of them on the screen as well. But check those out. They really showcase why this card was a viable solution for a lot of the creative professionals at the time, and how it compared to a lot of the other offerings. So now that we have the video software installed on this machine, let's see how it works. First off, this is our breakout cable. So this plugs into the back of our Radius Video Vision card. There are two ports on that. There's a DV15 out port, and that plugs into our monitor. And then we have a special connector that plugs in to this breakout board. Now, this breakout board has multiple ports on it. We have audio and video in and out, both composite and S-video. And then we have an external connector as well. So what we're going to be doing is primarily using the composite video connections here, but I may play around with S-video if we can. 
but we're going to see how this works with, let's say, Adobe Premiere, which is what we have installed on the system. Now, one handy tool that comes with the Radius Video Vision is this Video Viewer program. And what that basically does is just simply shows you in a window what is being displayed on the content that you're plugging into here. So it's a very easy way to just check to make sure that your hardware is working. And that was very important because on this particular machine, when I was inserting that Nubus card, it did not want to see correctly. And that really made the difference of me understanding if this card was actually functional or not. Now I could be using VCRs and laser disc players and video game consoles to demonstrate this thing, but I want to do something original and I want to use original content so I don't get any copyright notifications or anything like that. So we're going to be using a camcorder. Now I originally started recording footage on this camcorder for another project, but it's going to come in handy. So this is a Canon XL2 and yeah, it's overkill. This is actually a DV camcorder, but it does have the analog outputs on the side. So we're going to be using this and just pretending it's an older camcorder than it really is, but the footage should look really nice. First, let's import footage from our video camera or video device into our computer. To do this, we're going to obviously use the breakout box here and we're going to be using a set of composite or RCA video cables. We also have a set of cables that are going out from the computer that would display whatever is on the screen. We're going to be using that later in the video. So first, let's plug this into our camcorder. Now our camcorder has a BNC connector for composite video, but we're just going to be using a standard adapter for that. Actually, it's probably better if I hold this. All right, so I'm going to open the video viewer application. And let's go and make this half size. And I'm gonna try playing back this content and seeing if it displays. There we go, I just had to flip a switch. Now, the videotape I'm using on this camcorder, well, it had some problems. So some of the footage is a little jerky and there's some digital noise breakup, but you can see how long ago I shot this footage. These trees are obviously in winter here in the United States, in the East Coast at least. So yeah, <laughs> this project has, has been kicking around for a while. But you can see the video displays quite nicely on the little video viewer application here. And we could go in here and we can make that full screen. We could also go in here and make that quarter size. And if we really desired, we could go in here and we could change the video format or the input that we were using, etc. But this confirms that our card is working, which is fantastic. So we're going to go back to our view here and I'm going to press rewind. And we're going to see the video footage of Rewind. So this video footage is coming directly out of our camcorder into this Radius breakout box, into that Radius card, right onto our Macintosh. Cool, huh? Now, originally, this video footage was looking a little bit funky. And it looks very textured, and something is just wrong with the colors. And I was thinking, well, maybe that's just a limitation of this particular machine. Oh, what the heck is this? I'm going to press pause here because I want to show you an example of something. I was a bit foolish when I was playing around with this at first, and I thought, well, this isn't really capturing all the color information that is on this videotape. There's something weird here. You could see around the gradients here where there just should be more color information there. You could see above the pink banner and where the stuffed rabbit is, there should be more color information so it's not as much of a, a jarring uh, transition there between colors. And silly me, I realized that this system was actually set uh, to 256 colors. So if I change that to millions of colors, that problem goes away. And the video looks like what you would have had on a VCR or an old television at the time. So at first I was sort of disappointed from the results, but it was my own fault for having the settings wrong. So as we can see, the video footage plays just fine on the video viewer application. So let's import that video into Adobe Premiere. All right, well, the camcorder battery died, so I'm going to use this old VCR and we're going to import some of that Radius Video Vision demo footage from their little promotional video and see how that works. Oh, boy. I was importing a clip from the VCR. It was only about 10 seconds or so. And yeah, the machine froze on us. And I'm going to restart it and see if we're able to continue. Okay, we've run into some issues. <laughs> it's been quite a few hours trying to get this thing to work. A lot of the VCRs I was using just didn't want to work. And so, yeah, that's been fun. So I've also restarted into system 7.6.1 as 8.1 was having some issues and just freezing randomly. So hopefully the system software is more compatible 
with this version of Adobe Premiere and this version of the Radius Video Vision software and hardware. So I'm going to open a project up in Premiere 3.0. And we're going to select the Radius Studio full screen option here. And if needed, we can dumb it down to the fast version here, which is a bit of a lower video quality setting. So I'm going to go into the file menu and go to capture and select movie capture. All right, we have a piece of video playing here. Let's try and record it. You can see the video is stuttering there. It's freezing once in a while. And I believe that's because it's trying to compress the video as it's capturing it. So that's enough for now. I'm going to click the mouse button to stop the recording here. And it gives us this report and it says that uh, there were a bunch of dropped frames. So if I scroll down here, I can see all the frames that were dropped. So I'm going to close this out and I'm going to try and play back the video that we just recorded. So as you can see, the video frames are actually dropping, but the audio is intact. So let's try this again. Let's go back to movie capture, but let's go to settings. And I'm going to select this option post compressed video. So what that's going to do is it's going to compress the video after it records it, I think. Let's see if that works. And I'm going to re-record the same clip and see if we have any better uh, reaction here while it's recording. So it seems like it's dropping a lot of frames now. At least the video is very touch and go here. And I'm going to stop it at about the same spot and see if uh, we get any luck here. All right, so now it's compressing the video. I guess before what it was doing is it was compressing it on the fly there. So I'm very curious to see if the video result is better or worse. All right, so we still have dropped frames, uh, 64 frames. Oh my goodness. So let's play this back and see if it's any better. Actually much worse. So the video is playing back, but it's choppy. Not all the frames are there, but at least the audio is okay. And that's for about a, a 20 second clip or so. Let's try and record it on a lower setting and see if we get better quality here. Actually, let's try recording to RAM. So we have 136 megabytes of RAM in here. So let's see if we could record a small segment to RAM instead of the hard drive and see if that speeds things up. <laughs> I don't know if it will, but hopefully it won't freeze the machine. Out of space, either your RAM or disk has filled up. Please close some applications. Okay, well, how much space we got here? Got 1.8 gigabytes free. And we have uh, 128 megabytes free. So that's not exactly true. Not exactly sure what's going on. Let's go into the settings here. Let's see what it takes to get a smooth capture here. At current size. No, let's do um, so 160 by 120. And let's see if that helps at all. So we're recording our pizza man again. This is at 160 by 120 resolution, and it seems to be recording pretty smoothly. So let's hope we don't get any drop frames. Okay, so I'm stopping that recording. And we're not getting any warnings about drop frames, so that's great. I'm just going to mute the video here and play it back. Let's make that a little larger. So obviously it's a little pixelated here. But the playback is smooth and I'm not seeing any dropped frames, so that's good. We could use our little jog wheel here and we could scrub back and forth. Okay, I'm just curious how large that video file was. Here's that pizza ad file that we recorded. That one 20 second Video file is about 18 megabytes, so about a megabyte per second if you're at that 160 by 120 resolution there. So let's do something here. Let's import that file that we just recorded. 
there's probably a better way of doing this, but this is my real first time using this application. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, import that. Okay, so we got a clip here. I guess we could just drag that here. Okay, and it's going to show that on our timeline or our construction window, whatever uh, it's shown us here. You're so used to having things instantly <laughs> playing back at everything here, but uh, so here's our preview. Ah, okay, so I have to select what I want in our preview, and I guess this yellow area is what we're going to be exporting. So let's play that back. Can we do that? Oh, yes, there's a big play button up here. So let's play that. Building preview. Okay, so it seemed to have done exactly what we wanted it to do. So I did have the quality set pretty high on this. I wonder if I could set this lower. It looks like the Radio Studio only has one quality setting. You can't drag it down. It's at 100%, which I guess is great. But uh, so if we do uh, 10 frames per second or something like that, that would be helpful. But I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah, so this one's a data rate of 9.9 .9 megabytes per second. I think I, the last time I clicked this, it froze the system. But let's try. Oh, there we go. So, ah, OK, so this is testing the hard drive to see if it could actually handle this. And <laughs> yeah, that's much slower than it was expecting. OK. I think it was 9.9, .9, now it's 0 0.9. Let's do something here. Let's try and record a new clip just for fun. So let's look at our settings here. I'm going to record it at 320 by 240. And we're going to press record. It actually doesn't seem to be dropping any frames. So I guess maybe we just had the bit rate way too high for this machine to handle. And that's probably my fault because I put in a SCSI hard drive, not the SD solution I have in here now, but I had a SCSI hard drive in there to try and record this stuff at a faster rate. And maybe that was my problem. I left it on in that setting. So let's see if we get any drop frames. We do. <laughs> There's plenty. So never mind. There goes that theory. We have <laughs> almost 1,200 drop frames out of 45 seconds. Although, honestly, it played back pretty smooth. Let's see if I can notice any drop frames here. I mean, if there are drop frames, it's very hard for me to tell. Maybe I could spot like it being a little bit jerky, but the playback quality is actually pretty smooth. So I would say that's passable. So let's see how large this video file is. So I'm going to save that commercial clip here. And let's go to the finder here and see how large that clip actually is. Okay, so that's 40 megabytes, so yeah, about a megabyte per second still. But the quality is much, much improved. We're getting a larger resolution. Even if it's saying we're dropping frames, I'm not really seeing that much uh, damage there. So that's not bad. All right, so I'm going to save it. And now I want to try to export the video back to the VCR via the video out ports. Hello there. I've been playing around with this thing for hours, and I can't get it to work. The latest development is when I plugged in these video cables into the output of this panel, well, something funny happened. You can see there's no display on the monitor, although the computer's on. Yeah, it's displaying on that monitor, which has a composite video input from this cable. So yeah, when this is plugged in, it's displaying the video on that screen and that screen only using the built-in video output of that Radius Video Vision Card we get nothing on the monitor itself. 
I don't know why. <sighs> so I've been playing around with this thing for hours and I cannot figure out what's going on. At least we have some nice flying toasters. But the problem is whenever I try and take a completed video project and I try and export it, uh, there's an option to say print or save or export to uh, Video Vision Studio. And I select that, I get a system beep and Adobe Premiere quits. That's it. Every single time. Try different operating systems, try different versions of the software. Same problem. I also have a different problem if I go to export and print to video and that basically displays it full screen without the use of this radius adapter because we're already full screen because it decided to only output on this screen via composite video. It plays back at like two frames per second because it's likely not using the onboard compression or decompression or processor that's on that video vision card. So I don't know if something is just not plugged in correctly. There's a software conflict or something weird. I could go on forever trying to play around with this and trying to get it to work, but Right now, all I got is toasters. So I think I had to put a pin in this here, take a break, and come back to this in another video, unfortunately. And it's gonna make the intro that I shot earlier make a whole lot less sense. So my apologies there. But I think this card is really cool. I think the potential of it is excellent. And I really would like to play around with this more. I just can't get it to work on this machine. So maybe we'll, we'll try another machine or I'll try another configuration of devices that I'm plugging into this. And maybe it'll want to work in the future. And when it does, I'd be happy to do a video about that. But until then, I think we're stuck. So this video was, well, kind of a bust. <laughs> I wanted to show you the full potential of this card, but it just didn't want to work for me. And we'll play around with it another day, I'm sure. But for now, I'm just going to have to stop it here. I appreciate you taking a look at me to try and see how this card works. And I'm sure it works fantastically <laughs> when it wants to. We'll try out some different hardware and software configurations in another video, but I think the whole idea of importing and exporting video on a vintage Mac is really cool. I've always loved doing that when I had uh, the later Power Macs like the 7500 that had that built-in AVIO, which was great. I mean, doing any of that on a 68K Mac, that's still very, very impressive. And the amount of processing power that's on that card itself that allows a machine like this to actually perform those tasks is really, really cool. This isn't my normal type of video where things wrap up in a nice little bow, but hopefully you like this video. And if you do so, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that little thumbs up and click on that little bell thingy. That'll make sure that you get notified when I release a new video. And if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you could do so. My handle is Mac84TV. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you could do so as well. Go to patreon.com forward slash Mac84. For as little as a dollar a month, you support my archiving efforts and my shenanigans like this and get exclusive access to behind the scenes footage and preview videos before anybody else does. That's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you right here next time on Mac84.